This is my story about my adventure to make a DNA necklace. I started out with this design from Thingiverse, which is made of a bunch of individual pairs, base pairs. Each, each pair is a separate print, and then they get clicked together to form the backbones and click together to form the double helix. You can see it's partly assembled. A lot of printing, it's a lot of little parts and a lot of cleanup. It's actually quite tedious to put together. So I was trying to figure out how to make it simpler. Alright, this is my first very crude attempt at making a double helix starting from a flat shape and then introducing a twist. These are joined together with sort of a knuckle and socket approach. This is number two and just giving it a little more twist still using the same socket approach. Number three even more twist. You can see that now. One thing I realized was it was twisting the wrong way. The helix should twist this way, right hand rule, and this one's twisting the left hand way. So this is number four, and the twist is going the right way now. You can see it's twisting around this way, so that's the right hand rule. It is still not twisting around a bigger circles, so starting with a flat shape um, it doesn't really give the right double helix shape. So then I decided to go to this, which is essentially printing it in a circle and then attaching the two backbones together. And this is made out of uh, PETG and it is um, kind of stiff. It's kind of thin. These pieces are maybe 0.05 inch thick. So the next one, there's number five. So you can see now that's getting more of the look of a DNA strand. I got the same problem again. I've got, it a, I've got a left hand twist and I need a right hand twist. Okay, there's number six. So I got a right hand twist now. I got the twist the right direction. Having some problems getting the joints to hold together so you can see I'm using some zip ties. Number seven, I'm just trying to make it twist a little faster. You can see how it's forming more of a circle. So there's six and seven. I don't know if you can see it. Six is just a shallower angle. I'm trying to get it to look more like the DNA, which it doesn't really look like it very well yet. Okay, so here's eight made into a complete strand. So I got it to separate a little bit more, started experimenting with kind of a ball and socket approach, which seemed to work pretty good, but that's kind of a full strand, and it's, um, it's pretty good, but it's still it's kind of stiff, right? So it doesn't form a very good necklace. And then here's a version where I just adjusted the angles again. It starts to look tighter, more like the proper DNA. So that's looking pretty good. And then I came up with the idea of using the flex filament or the TPU. So this is printed the same way. So it's printed in that circular shape, sort of like that, and then it gets formed together. And now with this it's very soft, but the problem is it's, it's, uh, it's almost, it's like uh, too soft, right? So with the flex it's about, it's an order of magnitude less stiff than the PETG. And PLA is about 10% stiffer than PETG. So this is the flex or TPU filament quite soft, so I increase the thickness. This is a complete strand. That looks pretty good. That actually could, could, uh, could be the necklace. So, 
That's one made in a nice red filament. It's kind of soft, kind of flexes. I like that. So I'm going forward with this in the production of a purple and a it's supposed to be gold, but it's a yellow um, backbone. So one backbone will be purple, one backbone will be yellow. I'm going to go over some cleanup of the DNA strand um, after you've printed it. You can see there's a lot of extra strands and stringiness. This is pretty common with the flexible or TPU filament. Um, in addition, printed some built-in supports. These need to be trimmed off. I use little diagonal cutters. If you snip it there and then snip it there and then that little piece comes off right there. See that? So then you get the ball like it's supposed to look. So you got to trim those off and trim that off. Okay, so that gives you the ball like it's supposed to look. Now all these other balls um, have extra junk on the end, so there's going to be a lot of little trimming. I'm going to trim off all these little tops. There you can see a lot of the little stuff I've trimmed off. Hit the strings with a heat gun, okay? Okay, don't uh, sit too long in any one spot with the heat because it could permanently damage the print, but a little bit of heat will just uh, take those strings away. So that's a good way to clean it up before you assemble it. Now we're going to assemble a pair of backbones. So I've got the backbone with the balls on this side, it's in purple. And I've got the backbone with the holes on this side, it's in yellow. So the first thing we need to do is cut them right to the edge of where the missing uh, base pair segment is. So diagonal cutters again, we're going to put it right on that corner and cut, snip. Okay, so that's open. You want to make sure you don't cut that hole because you need it. And then do the same with the holes. The backbone has the holes. Okay, so now they're both cut. And now essentially what's going to happen is that this one gets put together sort of like so. Okay, so you see how it's kind of, it's going to wrap itself together like that. I'm going to push those in. You might need pliers here. There, that one's through. So see that pair is assembled. And then you just work your way up the backbone. So And there it is, the DNA with two different color backbones. This is TPU filament and it is a little bit stiffer than this other variety I had which is called Flex. So these are the same gauge and this one's way softer, so I'm going to decrease the thickness of the TPU. That'll make it print faster and uh, it'll make it softer. Okay, this is a completed set of three pairs. And I'm just going to join the two ends together now. Okay, that's it. So 
Now it's completed.